generally relevant observations from a governance perspective. And I think that that really highlights um, the intersections that we need to explore between leadership, governance and management and measurement and how these can come together um, in new ways and how we can learn from one another in doing so. This side event has been organized every year since 2013 with the Multidimensional Poverty Peer Network or MPPN. And I now warmly invite Dr. Gonzalo Hernandez Licona, director of that network to take the floor. Gonzalo. Thanks, Sabina. Good morning and good afternoon. Uh, what we are doing now is just witnessing live heads of the states and ministers exchanging ideas about poverty and how to tackle the COVID pandemic. The event is a good example of how can we move together forward? How can we build back better? And this is by exchanging ideas openly. The Multidimensional Poverty Network, co-organizer of the event, is precisely about that. We started in 2013 when the network was launched together with Professor Amartya Sen. At that time, if you recall, there were only of a couple of countries engaged in measuring poverty in a multidimensional way. Then things accelerated due to this exchange happening within the network. So you, we saw Colombia, South Africa, Chile, the Seychelles, Mexico, exchanging ideas. Now we have 60 countries as, as an, in the network and 20 international institutions. And this enthusiasm jumped into the UN and now we have target 1.2 of the SDGs, which is about reduction of poverty in all dimensions by, by 2030. We celebrate this event hosted by the governments of Chile and Pakistan. Thanks, Ministers Carla and Sania for sharing your thoughts and ideas. In the case of Chile, we missed our annual event of the network this year, but we are planning to have it next year. We invite you to join the Multidimensional Poverty Network and be with us in Chile next year. In the meantime, we are paving the road to Santiago, El Camino de Santiago, with events like this one. Thank you very much. Gonzalo mentioned SDG 1.2.2, and it's a good moment to recognize the World Bank, UNICEF, which we'll speak later, and UNDP, which have recently facilitated countries to report their national MPI as SDG indicator 1.2.2. But thank you so much, Gonzalo, for your leadership. Earlier as the president of Conaval in Mexico, the first country to launch a national MPI in 2010, and now within the MPPN. We now turn to the ministerial and institutional panel. All listed speakers will present, but the order of two speaker has been adjusted. I'm delighted now to invite Cecilia Sharp, Assistant Director General of the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, CEDA, to share her remarks. Thank you, Your Excellencies, distinguished speakers, colleagues, and friends. A global pandemic was not part of the plan when the Sustainable Development Goals were agreed. We were prepared for an uphill struggle, but the recent events have made the climb that much steeper and changed the settings fundament in a fundamental way. But I say what has not changed is our firm commitment to eradicate poverty in all its forms everywhere. The members and leaders on the MPP network have today demonstrated their leadership and commitment to work with multidimensional poverty, share knowledge and experience and prioritize interventions benefiting the poor, the people living in poverty. The pandemic has shown that this is needed now more than ever to prevent further setbacks and to move our positions forward. At CEDA, we are proud to be part of this network and to financially support the work of the network through OFI. His Excellency President Ghani was telling us about his experience from using the MPI in Afghanistan. And in CEDA's multidimensional poverty analysis, we have been relying on national MPI data from Afghanistan for our own understanding of poverty in the country, when, which we use in planning and implementing our own bilateral development cooperation. And this is to say 
uh, the more we share knowledge about the face of poverty in countries, the better we get aligned in understanding and collectively can address context specific needs of people living in poverty. And we have no time to lose. The global pandemic and its economic consequences is spreading around the globe. During the past months, CEDA has adapted its support to respond to the crisis. This has implied sharpened emphasis on the poorest, identifying those at risk falling back into poverty and allowing our partners to flexibly adjust their programs to respond to those most urgent needs. The current crisis has emphasized how rapidly the levels of poverty can rise. If we don't recognize the overlapping and interlinked dimensions of poverty, this highlights the importance of uh, that, uh, the work that OFI and the members are doing continuously to advance and understanding poverty. And I believe that all our previous work has prepared us better to understand the challenges that we are actually facing now. To conclude, facing the new and remaining challenges on our way towards eradicating poverty can only be done in partnerships. CEDA is always open to discuss a multidimensional approach to poverty and how we can jointly make progress achieving the global goal number one in the agenda 2030. And we look forward to a continued very good and deep collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for your voice, for your collaboration and the unwavering professional attention to these topics at CEDA. CEDA has become an institutional advocate and leading voice on interlinked dimensions of poverty and on empowering poor women and men as active agents of their own lives and life plans and doing so on a shared planet. So thank you so very much. In the last in-person UN Statistics Commission back in March, eight of the 13 countries presenting were from Africa. And Angola and Ghana are the two countries that launched their national MPIs most recently. So work on MPI is ongoing across the continent. Today, I am delighted to invite Jackson Matumbo, Minister in the Presidency of South Africa and Steering Committee member of MPPN to speak to us. Minister, you have the floor. Minister, could I ask um, if you might perhaps restart your talk, but also with the microphone. We are not getting sound um, from you. So I, I do apologize, but would you mind restarting your remarks with the audio? While we uh, fix the connection for His Excellency Jackson Matumbu, um, unless you'd like to try again, sir. No, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. So we'll give one minute for the technical teams to work on the sound and we will progress to the Minister of Indonesia um, and invite him to deliver his re remarks, Your Excellency. And Minister Matumbu, we will come back to you after uh, uh, the minister from Indonesia. Uh, thank you, Sabina. Uh, distinguished uh, delegates, very good uh, morning to all. Uh, first, I wish uh, to thank uh, Mr. Minister of Social Development and Family of Chile for organizing this side event discussion on multidimensional poverty. This is a timely topic indeed. As part of global community, Indonesia has high commitment to make SDGs working. We are pleased to report that Indonesia has reached single digit poverty in 2018. 
This motivates us to achieve zero chronic poverty in 2024, five years early than our SDGs target. Alleviating chronic poverty needs a comprehensive method. We have used a multidimensional approach to sharpen our policies to aim at this goal, including expanding access to health, education, and economic opportunities. All of these efforts have shown significant impacts on poverty reduction. A collaborative work is the key strategy in managing a multidimensional approach. The outbreak of the novel coronavirus threatened Indonesia entire gain in reducing poverty. Currently, we have over more than 250,000 cases. The pandemic has declined the economic activities and decreased people's income. While all are affected, this pandemic hurts the poor the most. Women, people with disability, and older people are among the most vulnerable during pandemic. This situation will eventually affect Indonesia's poverty reduction target. In responding to this pandemic, the government issued a fiscal stimulus by expanding social assistance with increased benefits. We hope the intervention could help to dampen the effect of the crisis and prevent the poor and vulnerable from falling deeper into poverty. Moving forward to recover people's welfare, we include social protection reform in the government work plan 2021. The social protection reform prevent the poverty increase due to the COVID-19 pandemic and accelerate zero chronic poverty in 2024. More inclusive data is vital, is vital pillar to reduce the chronic poor. The integration of anti-poverty programs is the tax priority. By integrating social assistance and basic service provisions, we address the multidimensional poverty issues. Low living standard as well as limited access to health, education, and financial services can trap the poor in a cycle of intergenerational poverty. There's non-monetary dimension of poverty. If left unaddressed, will prolong and preserve poverty. Eliminating multidimensional poverty requires concrete strategies. Indonesia social protection reform will focus on accurate data as the entry point. To better identify the vulnerable groups, the President of Indonesia has mandated developing a social registry. Coordination among stakeholders is also crucial to ensure the program integration, especially between social assistance, basic services provision, and economic empowerment. We promote social and economic empowerment of women to help them out of poverty with multidimensional approach. Sustainable funding is needed to manage all this initiative. Finally, adaptive social protection is crucial to minimize disaster in or finishing impacts such as caused by current pandemic. However, with 34 provinces in over 17,000 islands, we are aware that our success relies heavily on the effective implementation of poverty reduction programs at the subnational level. We will strengthen institutional framework to enable better coordination across government institutions, continue to invest in creating employment opportunities and business skills at the local level. Even though Indonesia used a multidimensional approach to fight poverty, measuring poverty does not always require a multidimensional index. The multidimensional poverty index may still be challenging to implement in Indonesia due to its complexity. For instance, the social protection reform is not reflected by MPI, even though it contributes greatly to reduce poverty. 
MPI would be difficult for the local government to calculate and interpret. It will also be hard to use MPI as a comparative indicator among regions in Indonesia. For this reason mentioned, Indonesia is currently not using the MPI method. Lastly, I believe that a strong commitment from all stakeholders, both in national and international levels, is crucial to reduce multidimensional poverty in all its forms. Let us working hand in hand to achieve the SDGs target. Thank you. Thank you so much. Suharso Mono Arfa, Minister of National Development and Planning Indonesia, noted the importance of applying a multidimensional framework to the measurement of poverty and the need to include indicators of social protection, to use it to inform targeting measures based on registry data and to illuminate diverse situations. Other countries do each of these, but it is vital to express doubts and criticisms openly. This welcome attitude accelerates communication and innovation. Thank you so much, Minister. Now we return with anticipation to Mr. Jackson Matembu, Minister in the Presidency of South Africa. I'm terribly sorry, Minister. Um, we are still not able to hear you. I'm terribly sorry. Um, so uh, perhaps we should try one more time to work on the mic and, and return to you afterwards. And so in that case, we will call on um, Her Excellency Arunzada uh, from Mongolia to deliver her remarks. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. I hope I am audible to you. <laughs> yes, you are. Please go ahead. Good. So your excellencies, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's an honor to be with you on this um, uh, eminent panelist to discuss uh, the importance of the multidimensional poverty measurement at this time uh, of um, COVID time. Uh, in my previous role as a chairperson of National Statistical Office of Mongolia, I saw actually the technical value of MPI as a tool for analyzing the overlapping deprivations experienced by the poor people. Um, uh, now, as a Minister of Social uh, Protection and Labor, I see how useful it can be for policies now. And um, uh, of course, I will work now with the technical team to develop a measure and ensure uh, it is used in the decision-making level. Uh, in Mongolia, we have worked with the Asian Development Bank to develop a pilot on national MPI with um, 18 indicators across five dimensions. Uh, these are just the first steps that we are doing and uh, further there will be a lot of work done. We now must work with uh, more recent data to develop a final measure and launch it with a robust communication strategy and promote it in policy use and sustainability. So the initial findings from the uh, pilot MPI suggested the importance of interlinkages of deprivation. As uh, my previous colleagues said, more than uh, fifth, uh, two fifths of people in the country were deprived in Mongolia in four or more of the indicators. So um, implies the need for coordinated action across the government. So health, education, even the ministry construction, the mini uh, other ministries uh, to better reach the poor population with joined up policies. Last year, uh, Mongolia submitted a voluntary national re review at the high level political forum, um, reporting uh, that the 10% of population were living in multidimensional poverty, using, of course, the global MPI produced by OFI and UNDP. Uh, the 2020 global MPI release showed also that the uh, this represents a decrease of the figures uh, on Mongolia of, um, from 2010, and that Mongolia was on track to meet the SDG target 1.2. Uh, 
So it is critical to evaluate the progress that we are doing, the policies, uh, how uh, the policies are met, um, that this progress is maintained even if as the pandemic threatens to undo it. Uh, the government of Mongolia has taken a proactive response to COVID-19 pandemic and has been also successful in limiting the spread. Um, uh, even we didn't have a uh, local uh, transmission um, of the uh, virus. Um, the suspension of schooling and reduction of export-based economy has created increased vulnerability for many Mongolians, but the government of Mongolia has been, um, has, has taken a lot of good and quick actions with the development partners together. At the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection, we are working to mitigate the, the negative impacts on increasing social assistance, uh, helping businesses to safely operate and coordinate with other stakeholders to align efforts. Uh, so in the future, the MPI will be also helpful in identifying particularly vulnerable population and um, enable us to give better targeted for programs. Um, uh, I'd like now to take the opportunity to thank uh, the MPI uh, colleagues, the MPPN, as well governments of Chile and Pakistan and UNTP for organizing this event and uh, letting us um, hear our experiences and learn from each other. So um, it has been uh, fascinating to hear what um, all others have done and are going to do. So thank you very much again. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Under the statistical leadership of Aryunzada Ayush, now the Minister of Labor and Social Protection, Mongolia started to design its MPI. And she shared the fact that 40% of Mongolians are deprived in four or more of the indicators of their trial measure at the same time. That sentence captured at a glance what's new about the MPI rather than a dashboard. It shows the overlapping deprivations that strike a single person or a family. And we wish you all of the very best as you continue from a new angle to work on poverty in all its dimensions. They say that hunger is the best sauce. And now we await with great anticipation the remarks of our minister, Jackson Matembu from South Africa. Minister, you have the floor and our anticipation. Thank you, thank you very much, Sabina. I hope you can hear me now. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you very much. At long last, we had to change the gadgets. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, it is a great honor for us to be addressing this esteemed gathering today as we continue to celebrate 75 years of the establishment of the United Nations. This meeting takes place at a time when countries are dealing with challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. South Africa has also not been spared of this pandemic and we have just moved from to alert level one of the national lockdown as part of our risk adjusted strategy, prompted partly by the declining trends we see in COVID-19 infections, but also prompted by the need to fully open the economy so that the people of South Africa can fully resume engaging in economic activities to support their families. Your Excellencies, the relevance of this meeting cannot be overemphasized as South Africa has experienced the vital role that data plays in informing plans and decisions towards addressing the manifestations of this pandemic. Our National Statistics Office, Statistics South Africa, promptly conducted rapid online surveys to provide insights about the impact of COVID-19 on the economic and social well-being of households in the country. These were conducted soon after the country went into alert level five national lockdown at the height of the COVID-19 infections, we had, which had placed the country on the highest level of restrictions ever seen in our history. The rapid surveys indicated temporal and permanent, permanent loss of employment reduction or loss of income, increase in incidences of hunger, amongst other challenges. A social and economic relief package that was equal to 10% of our GDP 
uh, and indeed the biggest package in our history was established by our government to address these challenges. In addition to other interventions targeting SMMEs and the business community in general, targeting the right recipients and beneficiaries then became a crucial part of the solution. It was important for South Africa to continue to be led by sound evidence in planning, deciding and distribution of interventions. Data and statistics have become quite critical in our daily decisions, not only in South Africa, but the world over. The South African multi-dimensional multi poverty index that we call SAMBI, a South African multi-dimensional poverty measure, played a vital role in identifying areas where interventions are to be directed. Working with the National Statistics Office and its provincial offices, we were able to provide to profile districts, municipalities, and communities to identify areas of need. Before the pandemic hit, we could already see that the outputs of SAMPI were taking root in our country to inform planning and implementation of poverty reduction programs. We have used the SAMPI to inform our provincial growth development frameworks, provincial poverty eradication master plans, and provincial spatial development frameworks and the integrated development plans at local government levels. We have seen the sum be used to better understand communi communi communicable diseases such as tuberculosis, which has strong correlates with poverty. Our country has a social welfare program that caters for over 17 million South Africans who are mostly the elderly, the disabled, and needed children from poor households up to the age of 18 years. Children are perhaps the most innocent victims of the scourge of poverty. Targeting efforts to expand the child support grant, which is one of the South Africa's most successful social protection instruments for addressing child, childhood poverty, utilize the SAMBI to confirm if the targeting measures were reaching the intended groups. These efforts are rooted in addressing the very real lived experiences of the most vulnerable in our societies. Civil society organizations have used the data to contribute to our government's cause for development, especially on matters of addressing issues of poverty. The ability of the SAMBI to provide information at much lower levels of geography is key to galvanizing responses from society at large. All this, your excellencies, is testimony of how data, multi-dimensional poverty data to be, specific, to be specific, can help change lives. Currently, South Africa is planning for the next population census to be conducted in 2021. This very important undertaking will avail fresh data on multi-dimensional poverty in South Africa to ask policymakers for better understanding of the poverty situation, better planning, more accurate cut targeting, and most useful for poverty reduction strategy development. Meetings such as these, where countries can share experiences and learn from one another, are important and provide a basis for the use of empirical evidence in our daily efforts to address the poverty challenge. Through the use of such evidence, as countries, we are well in the right path of achieving sustainable development goals and agenda 2030. Let me wish all of you well during these trying times. The people of South Africa send their warmest regards to all of you. Working together as people of the world, we will overcome this COVID-19 challenge. We again, as a country, would like to thank the governments of Chile, government of Pakistan and OFI for hosting this very important event. Of course, Sabina, we also want to thank you and your wonderful team for this excellent moderation of this event. I thank you so much. Thank you so much, Minister. Your description of SAMPI um, being used in so many different ways and updated 
in different uh, data sources is electrifying and it is worth waiting for. The multidimensional poverty index is often called a high resolution lens. And when core MPI questions are embedded in the census, it becomes the closest we have to a picture which is not pixelated. Like Nepal, like South Africa, like Colombia, like Bhutan, I hope that many countries embed core MPI questions in their upcoming census round. Thank you.